How's it going Eliminators? Today we're going to be working on a Bombardier DS90 two-stroke kids ATV. So let's get right into it. So we got the Bombardier DS90 little ATV here. It is a two-stroke and I've pretty much disassembled the majority of what I need to take off of this. We just had to fabricate a little uh, metal hanger for the battery. They always seem to break off on these little kids ATVs. So we fixed that up, welded that in, and then we had to take off the front plastics here. I just disconnected the handlebars up here. So that's been taken off. And then as well as all of that, we've also gone and removed the carburetor from right down there. So the reason that I had to take the handlebars and the plastics off like that was just so I can get it up and pull out the fuel tank. I have the fuel tank here and uh, this one just bolts up with a couple of 10 millimeter bolts on uh, either side there front and back. The problem with this was that my customer he's got uh, two young kids and they found a dead mouse and they thought it would be a good idea to put the dead mouse inside of this. So what ended up happening was there was about half a tank of gas. The dead mouse kind of decomposed in there and it smelled exactly as you would expect it to. It reeked. It was absolutely terrible. So no fuel would come out because there was just so much nasty stuff in there. Basically gelatinized that poor little mouse. So I had to uh, remove the fuel tank and basically I just went in there, drained everything out. Then I just took some spray nine, sprayed it inside of the tank blasted it with the hose and rinsed it out until there were no bubbles left and then essentially it was just clear water coming out of there uh, so then I left the tank to sit with the gas cap off out in the sun so that's been cleaned and dried now moving on to the carburetor this carburetor needed to be cleaned it was pretty gummed up I just put it into a bag here to uh, keep it clean while I'm you know working on stuff and uh, waiting for parts so I'll get to that as well so here's the carburetor here it's a uh, two-stroke so it has a little oil port here. Now, I don't always recommend using the oil containers on the machines. So on this ATV, you have basically an oil reservoir right here. You put two stroke oil in there and then it automatically mixes a predetermined amount of oil into your carburetor. So essentially, they make these kind of like foolproof so that you just put straight gas into the tank, put your oil in there and then you shouldn't have to worry. Now, the problem with this setup is that if you ever pinch that line or you get dirt in there or something happens to where your oil delivery is now slowed uh, into the carburetor, what will happen is your engine will run lean. And because you're not mixing the fuel yourself, you don't really know what the mixture is and you can end up blowing up an engine really easily. So what I would recommend is basically you just uh, take that tank off and cap the line and then go ahead and mix your fuel yourself, whether it's like a 40 to one or 50 to one, whatever mixture it is supposed to be at, then you can just mix it yourself and then run mixed gas right into the gas tank and then you won't have to worry about having uh, any kind of uh, oil starvation issues where your engine's running lean and on a two stroke that oil that is in the fuel mix uh, that lubricates your internal components so uh, unlike a four stroke where you have uh, bottom end oil lubricating your crankshaft and things of that nature so by mixing it into the fuel tank yourself you shouldn't have any problems so as we can see I've already taken uh, this carburetor off of the engine and I've already cleaned it now to get this carburetor off of this engine it's pretty simple you have to come in here and pull this boot off of the carburetor that goes back to your air box which is up here and then uh, if you come in on an angle just right about here you should be able to get a Phillips head screwdriver in to a clamp that goes around the carburetor to the boot that goes to the engine then you can go ahead and disconnect your throttle cables and your choke and then that's it you can pull it right off you can see here that I've already taken apart the carb kit or all the jets and the metering rod and whatnot and I also have a Kimpex 209114 carburetor rebuild kit this is for a two-stroke DS90 Bombardier. So here's all your part numbers. This is uh, allballsracing.com. So first of all, when you're rebuilding a carburetor, you want to have a nice clean workspace. So I've wiped down my table here. I have a piece of clean cloth put down and I have my carb rebuild kit laid out. So what I've done is just put some new parts and new components on the right and the old ones on the left. Same with there. Now, this kit comes with a couple different pilot jets. So we have a number 20, 
we have a number 17.5 and then the one that we took out of our machine is a 17.5 so we're going to be replacing it with the same one right here and then if i have to make any adjustments or rejetting then i can end up putting in the 20 which is slightly bigger here's our main jet here we have a new seat so here's the old one and here's the new one now notice that it says 1.2 so if you look you might be able to find a number it has a stamping on it if you guys can see that there 1.2 so you guys are going to want to make sure that the number on your carb kit is the same because that 1.2 is what identifies that hole at the bottom so if you have too large of a hole let's say it's a 1.5 then what will happen is when you go to put your needle valve in there it won't seat properly and you'll have a leaky carburetor so again you want to make sure that's the same up here this is our idle adjustment screw we didn't get one in the kit however they did give us a brand new o-ring so when i go to put this back in i'll clean it up and then i'll keep the spring and then i'll just put that new o-ring and replace it with the old one that's there we have a new gasket here and the old one's up there the old gasket looked to be in okay condition but i'm going to replace it anyways we also have some new screws here they're phillips head and they can replace the old ones because the old ones you guys can see the heads of them get kind of gnarled and uh, if they strip then you got to go in with like a dremel and grind a flat onto them and uh, no good so if you got new screws you might as well go ahead and use them apart from that we also have a little gasket and we have a couple little o-rings here so those o-rings there will be for the choke and then i believe that uh, that gasket there is for the throttle right there like i said guys you want to lay everything out nice and clean workspace you don't want any dust or debris and uh, I'll go ahead and start putting this thing back together we'll see if we can get it to seal so I've now put in our idle screw and I've also put in our air fuel mixture screw so what you want to do with uh, both of these is uh, take them and thread them all the way in uh, don't go too tight because you could end up damaging them they are brass and for the air fuel mixture screw right here you want to thread it all the way in and then back it out one and a half to two turns. So I just set it at one and three quarters and then I can adjust that easily once this carburetor is back on the machine. Uh, for the idle, I've done the same, threaded it all the way in and then I've backed that out two turns. So that should give you just a, a good baseline. Now this air fuel mixture screw right here, basically that limits the amount of air going through this hole right here. So this hole takes air and it goes through there and then there's the little fine tip when it's threaded in that just limits air going into your carburetor. So if you thread this all the way in, what you're doing is limiting and blocking that airflow. So if you have that threaded all the way in, you're running too rich, which means that your pilot jet, these little guys right here, has too big of a hole. So remember when I was saying it's a 20 and a 17.5, these two are 17.5s. If it's too big of a hole, you're gonna be running rich. So if you have to thread your air fuel mixture screw all the way in and you're limiting that air, that means that your pilot jet is actually too small because it's running lean already. So then you have to put this all the way in to restrict the airflow to richen it up. So essentially, if your air fuel mixture screw is screwed all the way in, you're gonna have to move to a bigger pilot jet. Whereas vice versa, if you have your air fuel mixture screw screwed all the way out and your carburetor runs fine, that means that it's running rich and you're adding air to balance it out, which means that you're gonna have to go to a smaller pilot jet size. Now I picked this ATV up in a non-running condition. However, because it had a 17.5 pilot jet in it, that's what I'm going to put back inside of it. As far as the main goes, I only have one right here, and we can see there that it says 77.5. So that's the size for the main. And if we look at the OEM one here, you guys can also see it's stamped 77.5. So if I would have gotten this machine and it was in a running condition and I could tell that it was running lean, then I'd go and put a bigger pilot jet in that 20 and replace the 17.5 and then I could richen it up a little bit. But because I picked this thing up and it was in a non-running condition, I really don't know. So I'm just going to put everything back together, get it back on the ATV, mix up some fuel, try to uh, fire this thing up and then uh, go from there. I've gone ahead and installed our new seat as well as the little clamp that holds it down. Just make sure that when you're putting that screw in that you don't over tighten it guys because you have to remember this is going into aluminum and you could strip it super easy. I would also recommend having a nice clean set of screwdrivers. You want to make sure that those are clean too because uh, you know when you're putting the screws back in here you don't want to have a chunk of dirt fall off a screwdriver into your uh, seat or anywhere else. So again 
Just uh, clean workspace, clean tools, makes everything so much easier. Okay, so that's it for part one. If you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. So you guys can click here to subscribe. And once part two is up, you can click over here for that one. You can also check in the description down below. I'll have the links there as well. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.